I, I don't think we could underplay the reality of the spiritual war that's against men as well. Yeah. Even just yes. from a cultural perspective, there has been a distinct war against the family for decades now uh, to to supplant the man as the head of his home um, yeah. and to remove remove from the man his purpose. And so his purpose is to become a domesticated house cat that provides for his family. Yes. And so, and, and that, and then even a lot of the time, at least from my perspective, the church's messaging has been man up and become that domesticated house cat. Mm, and so, right. so it's, it, um, <laughs> so that, that's the, that's the best thing that they could, that we, we have to give. It's like man up and overcome your vices and provide for your family. And it's like, okay, let's talk about the symptom of why there even is vices because the man feels completely removed of purpose and value. Mm. He's been, and, and, and so there's this massive gap. Like you talk about all of these areas that are, that are, uh, engulfing, uh, men, both young and old today. It's a symptom of something that's much deeper that we, one, the biggest strategy of the enemy that I can see is to convince men that they're not in a war daily. Mm. Um, so then what happens is it completely, uh, atrophies and destroys that warrior that's inside of the man that wants to fight daily. That's called to fight daily. Come and on, it also causes him to be a lone wolf. He has this burning thing in him that ultimately gets snuffed out by life because he desires to conquer a hill. And the, the early church conquered hills everywhere they went. Mm. They were on the offensive and mind you, the, the virtues of their life were gentleness and meekness and loving kindness, but they were also fierce and unafraid. And it was a, a testament of their salvation and of the other people's perdition just by the way that they walked. Nevertheless, they were known to all as gentle, as loving, as kind. And so I think there is a the warrior aspect of a man that's been sucked out of the church. Um, and partially, so I, I'm talking about two different things. One is the world and the second is the church. And so the the world obviously has... Uh, an agenda against the household as a whole, destroy the kids from believing that they're boy or girl, um, destroy the woman to um, feminism is to empower her to be something that she's completely not. And so uh, the most empowered place you can be as a woman is to be a man. And so um, to be like a man. And so, and also the man, you're utterly worthless, but provide. And so it, it's this, that's from the world's perspective, from the, from the church's perspective, Obviously, we're in the culture, but we're not of the culture. It's difficult for us to not be at least stained by like like you, you jump in a pool filled with with uh, with red dye. You're going to come out at least pink, and and I think that's that's a what we see in the church is that we do have an undercurrent of feminist feminist ideals and 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 feminist sentiments. And we do, we don't fully know where to put the masculine soul or even how to tend to it. And so it's just kind of left in a co in a corner. Um, and so, and these are, these are things that, like you say, people aren't confident, but I think that that was a spiritual endeavor of the enemy to make That's men so not comf confident so that we won't step into this space so that, and ultimately it's not just so that men won't be men. It's so that the church will not conquer because God has made a means by which the church will conquer. And it's the leadership that he's put in men. And, and I, and don't hear what I'm not saying. It doesn't mean that women cannot conquer, but God has designed the woman to be empowered by her husband. He's designed women to be empowered by the love of her brothers, of her father, of her, of the men that are around, mm. around her, and even to call out the greatness that's in her. But if men aren't even able to do that, Women have to go it alone. They have to lead alone. They have to be a covering for themselves in a lot of cases, which the scriptures are very clear that God has designed for men to be a covering for the women around them. And so when the man has to, when the man is no longer uh, given that role and ripped out of that place, you, you get the whole structure falling to the ground. Yes. And so if you think of it from a battle strategy, from Satan to the church, of course, he's going to go for the front lines, which is the man. Of course, he's going to attack us in that way. And, and he's successfully done so. And I think it's time for us to take back that ground.